I've been patiently waiting on this. I knew about the story when it launched on mainstream media with the charges against Hugh Edwards, but I decided that I would wait until the sentencing came to give my thoughts, even though I had so many thoughts uh, that I wanted to give with the way that the whole thing was being worded and reported on um, before the sentencing came. And then, of course, I wake up this morning to see um, everybody talking about what's happened. And now is my time to give my thoughts. I know in the past I've mentioned that I stay away from current affairs um, because I can't get a balanced view because I don't have a team of people. I just watch one or two videos, get a feel for some of the social media posts and what people are saying. But of course, I'm in my own echo chamber. Um, so that's a bit of a shame because I only really will see it from one side. But today I want to give my most balanced uh, views on what's happened um, because it's one of my aims to not get so emotive <laughs> about these topics, even though it's almost um, <clears throat> impossible for me to do that, like literally impossible for me to do that. But I want to report on them in a... <clears throat> in a stable way um, and try to think about things from all sides of the debate the best that I possibly can. Please get involved in that. If you're watching this on YouTube, put your comments in the comment section continuously throughout this video. Um, it creates discussion and it's always... Uh, uh, everybody's always waiting for the first people to comment. Um, I know in audio format you can't put comments, um, there's no comment section on Spotify, uh, for example. It doesn't matter, but if you're watching along on YouTube, as I say, comment continuously because that's what everybody wants. As soon as the first couple of comments go on, um, everybody starts joining in and that's exactly what we're here for. So I went through some videos on YouTube this morning trying to find one to um, respond to and I found one from LBC Radio um, which seems to be uh, let's say um, the most suitable one for me to respond to. It hits the discussion from various points. I also tried to find um, a video of people talking about the fact that they did think the sentencing was correct and they thought that they think that society is looking at this from the wrong angle because just to let you know in general, everybody's angry. I know there's some people on my YouTube channel that are following that are from the camp of rational science-based approaches and they are angry with society. I know there's two people following in particular. Please come forward and get involved in this discussion. We we do want to hear it from your side um, also because I know that you are often thinking about this differently. Um, so, uh, let's try this out. Let's 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 start the video and, and and see what they're saying on this radio show. Stuart Nolan is chair of the Criminal Law Committee at the Law Society, managing director of DPP Law. Thanks for coming on, Mr. Nolan. Um, the judge, the chief magistrate, said that the starting point is a sentence that goes from twenty six weeks to three years custody. So, how did Hugh Edwards end up with a six month sentence suspended for two years? Oh, well, the judge would have looked at all the circumstances and then assessed the mitigating features of the case. Um, well, you can the facts of the case are pretty well known. Um, so you'd have put that to one side and then looked at the mitigating features, which we know to be remorse, um, the mental health issue, um, the lack of previous convictions, and any other matter that was uh, within their understanding. I'm, sh I'm sure there was medical reports. Um, okay. So, first things first, for those that don't know anything about this story, in particular those that are living outside of the UK, you would pro most probably not have heard about this story, but Hugh Edwards is a uh, well-known news reporter for the BBC and has been on our television sets for, I think, decades, I'm not sure, but he's a, he's a known face and he has been caught with, I believe, 41 images of children on his computer and some of them are being what they're calling category a images um, I think videos as well and um, we are going to go into what category a means in in a moment but as we just heard he, his sentences was his sentencing was um, six months with a two years suspended sentence now suspended sentence what does that actually mean uh, by definition I'm not exactly sure, so I don't want to like guess that. Um, 
what I do know is it's not immediate prison time. So let me just search what suspended sentence means. So we're all knowledgeable on that. Just give me one second. Okay, so I just do a quick Google search, right? So suspended sentence means a judicial punishment which is not enforced unless further crime is com committed during a specified period. So, for example, a two-year suspended sentence, he will not see jail time as long as he behaves within that time period. So he didn't see um, uh, prison prison immediately. He didn't see jail time immediately. And this man, Stuart Nolan, from the Law Society, is saying that the judge would have um, thought about lots of things when he was potentially going to sentence Hugh Edwards for having images and videos on his WhatsApp of children, real children, the, like the children in your family, like the children in my family, being sexually abused. They've been recorded or photographed during those actions, and he's got them on his phone. And what were the three things that the judge would have taken into account when sentencing? First of all, it's the first time he's committed an offence, so he's not known to the criminal justice system. He's never been arrested before, etc. But that just doesn't make any sense because do you think that he got caught with these images on his phone and that's the first time he's ever had images on his phone <clears throat> you think like he woke up one morning received these images from whoever sent them to him and then he got caught that day or has this been going on for years we all know what the definite answer to that is nobody gets caught the first time they're ever committing an offence on that day or we could say very few so yes okay so he's not known to the police um but you know with good confidence we could say that he's been involved in this illegal activity for some time what was the second one that he said he pleaded guilty now for me i think that pleading guilty when it comes to a sexual offence against a child, an illegal sexual offence against a child. Your guilty plea shouldn't reduce your sentence. But I know that brings so many complications, doesn't it? Because um, then everybody's going to go not guilty and then every case has to be investigated even further, which costs money, which nobody has. So, you know, um, and I don't know the situations, uh, the way the police work in detail. So, I can just take that as a guess and another assumption, which I believe I'm not too far off. And the other, uh, the third point that the judge will reflect on is remorse. So he's sorry that he did this. He's not sorry that he did this. He's sorry now because he got caught. If he didn't get caught, how many more years would he be doing this for? These are all common sense, in my opinion, and they shouldn't have been things that reduced his sentence. Now, didn't they also mention mental health in there? That really infuriated me. I believe um, that would just be someone playing the mental health card. Um, I don't know whether he's got any actual uh, diagnosis there or how severe his diagnosis is, but I don't think we should accept the fact that um, if you've got mental health issues, it should be pardoned that you've got children on your phone who have been recorded in sexual situations and you are getting off on it. Mental health, I don't think we should be... It just seems like a bit of a blurry line there, doesn't it? Because if he's going to uh, have his sentence reduced due to mental health issues, then every single sex offender that comes forward is going to play that card. And I am not a doctor or a psychiatrist, so again, all of my thoughts here today are just my opinions and my thoughts with the education and information that I know of, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to say. Let's get back to this video. Putting those two things together, I would decide upon what the starting point would be, and then assessing what would be probably what an important part of the mitigation was the plea of guilty, which reduces your sentence in any court, um, in this particular case, probably down from a third of what it would have been as a starting point. And then once they've got to that point, they, they fix a, They then consider whether or not if it's under, well, it would have been under two years in the magistrate's court, the maximum sentence is 12 months, unless it's going to be, if it's more than one offence, then to see whether or not there are any prospects of suspending it. This is a normal thing to be done in any situation. 
and they would have found that there are ways of rehabilitation, various other factors, um, and they said, well, we can suspend the sentence of imprisonment. That's how it would have been done, looking at all the circumstances. I doubt it was an easy decision. These are very serious matters. Okay, so uh, more things that I want to give my thoughts on. Um, first thing is, what do you think about the current legislation towards somebody if they've been found with this illegal material on their device? Do you think it should be an instant prison sentence? Um, do you think there should be a minimum prison sentence? Do you think there should be suspended sentences for any circumstance? Or do you think it should be, if you're found with these on your device and we know that you've been using them in some way it should be a straight prison sentence there's no avoiding that because we want to send out a message to all the other people that are playing around with this that you will see prison time if you commit this crime because we take it seriously why should we be taking this seriously because children the protection of children should be our utmost priority as a community and if some people are watching and they feel a kind of um, disconnect between protecting children of today's generation um, and images and videos, because images and videos aren't actual real children, let me talk a little bit more about that. The fact is that those images and videos that are on Hugh Edwards' phone were recorded on a mobile phone or a video camera or, a, or however they were recorded. They, they were actually recorded in real life situations. These are not animations. Um, these are not AI technology. This is real children being put in situations, sexually abused or enticed into sexual activity and recorded on a mobile phone, let's say. So real children have been exploited and horrifically abused to make the content and somebody watching that content or viewing that content is increasing the demand for that content to be made so it is directly it's indirectly but kind of directly um uh, child sexual abuse and the whole thing about rehabilitation um i, I mean i've done loads of podcasts on 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 that type of topic area whether rehabilitation is possible whether a cure is possible and do you know what in some respect I don't really care about the debate of whether rehabilitation is um, possible or not I believe that if you commit an offence like this you should be monitored for the rest of your life at a very minimum because even if um whatever procedure is carried out, um, sorry, whatever process is carried out with regards to rehabilitation, whether that be uh, psychiatric help, um, psychological help, whatever that be, um, much like um, uh, an alcohol addiction, <sighs> I know that comparing this to anything always causes problems because I'm not trying to compare to having a sexual abuse image on your phone compared to drinking alcohol but just stick with me on this and and, and maybe I'm somewhere near the mark um, if you take a alcoholic um, who has been sober for 10 years I know um, through watching Soft White Underbelly actually their, their YouTube channel that there's always that temptation in their mind they know they just can't go there um, and, and they manage to uh, not go there for the rest of their lives um, so something like that we could think about this issue and we could say that somebody who gets off, gets aroused sexually, uh, masturbates over children, um, can, uh, we hope that we'll never reoffend again, but the temptation is always going to be somewhere in their brain, like from a new neuroscience point of view, um, like it's deep in their brain. So um, rehabilitation I shouldn't say I don't care for that debate because that's very ignorant and, and not helpful of me. I care for that debate, of course, I'm interested in it. Um, but I don't think I don't think we should say if somebody commits a sexual crime where they, where they've um, where they've uh, uh, done something for their sexual gratification, they've been aroused by it. I don't think I think they should be monitored for the rest of their lives. Um, a, a, a very minimum so rehabilitation or not I don't think um you know what I'm kind of saying I don't think it's truly possible 
<laughs> I think that's what I'm saying. We can manage and maximise the chances that they don't riff in, but I don't think it's completely possible. You're aroused in general. For most cases, you're aroused by what you're aroused by. These people are aroused by children, you know, mostly men um, committing this crime. So they get erections over this. Let, let's, let, let's actually think about it in real terms. They get erections and they masturbate themselves over these videos and images. Right, so I bet that sent a shiver up your spine, right? But that's what we're dealing with here. We've got to get real with it. Let's continue. Um, but they would have looked at all the factors and come to the conclusion that a sentence of imprisonment, and it is a sentence of imprisonment, plus all those other matters, um, would mean that he didn't go immediately to, get to jail. It's a sentence of imprisonment if he commits another crime in the next two years, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, to, to the law, it's a sentence of imprisonment. But yes, if he commits He's offense, not in prison. No, he's not. He doesn't, not an immediate custodial sentence. Yeah. But uh, to all intents and purposes, it's on his record as a custodial sentence. But if he was to commit an offence during what they call the operative period, yes, he would go to jail in all probability, I'd say, unless there was exceptional circumstances. That would be the normal course of events. Um, that this was even at a magistrate's court is, is interesting. We we'll might come to that in just a moment. But as part of the mitigation, as you say, the magistrate noted that Hugh Edwards has no previous convictions, had voluntarily stopped receiving the images, had shown remorse and had a mental disorder. He described him as being potentially vulnerable in prison, which may or may not be true. But look at the vulnerability of the children he watched perform horrific acts. Some of these, the most serious category of images, um, which were moving images, which I understand is an aggravating factor. OK, so um, more of my thoughts, please. Please allow me to do this. Um, I know I'm stopping the video often, um, but I, I really have so much to say on this. When they say about one of the one of the uh, one of the influences on the judge's decision was that he will be um, vulnerable in prison uh, due to his uh, mental instability and uh, his ca general character. I don't really care, so I'm going to use that again. I'm going to use that phrase again, and, and and I think this time I mean it more. Right? I don't really care. Like that's the consequence. Um, so we're not going to send. Um, prolific offenders like intense offenders against children our most precious thing that we have in our community that should be protected at all costs we're not going to send an offender who carried out the offense by their own free will they weren't tricked into it they made a decision to carry out that illegal activity we're not going to send them to prison because they may get hurt in there and they may be vulnerable in there well how what where are we going with this where are we going with this if you commit a child if you commit a crime against an innocent child you should have to pay the consequences you should have to face the consequences and one of those consequences is that you're going to pr prison and we all know that a lot of prisoners don't take lightly to sex offenders against children so you will be feeling fear when you go in there but that's part of the crime, the, the, the horrific crime that you committed, that as a society, we're not accepting. We don't accept this, right? And 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 in my view, you should be, you should face the full force of the law if you commit a violation against a child in a sexual way. I really do believe that because how else are we going to send uh, the correct message out to others as well? And um, I know I received some comments recently on my Facebook about longer sentences not helping the frequency of this crime. And I actually, I can't remember exactly what that person said on my Facebook, um, but their, their point was valid because they were talking about... Um, once the crime has been committed, whether you get five years or ten years, the rehabilitation system in prisons is so diabolical that actually spending the ten years in prison isn't isn't going to make you uh, less likely to reoffend than the five years in prison. So they were talking about once the crime has been committed, and often um, the longer you stay. Uh, separated from general civilization, general society, when you are released from prison, if you spent 10 years away from general society, you're going to stand a lesser chance of actually reintegrating uh, back into the community 
rather than if you spent the five years. So there were points to be made by that person on my Facebook. Um, but I think when we talk about sentence length, um, what we're actually really doing is what we want to do is we want to let people know that we don't take this crime lightly and so if you are going to play around in that illegal sphere then you get caught you're going to get punished because can you imagine how many people um how many thousands tens of thousands of people have these types of images on their phone or their laptop and um they're like, well, I'll just continue doing this uh, because if I get caught, I'm not going to see prison. I'm just going to see a, a suspended prison sentence and this is what I want to do and I don't care. And so, see you later. Like, can you imagine how many people, how many how many criminals, how many offenders um, are okay with, with this 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 sentencing not being a deterrent or, or, or creating fear in them for committing this crime? Um yeah, I, I think that's... Ugh, I feel myself getting worked up now and I promised myself that uh, I wouldn't. Let's continue the video and let's see whether I can think about the other side of the debate too. Um, because I'm, I, I want to make this as balanced as I can. I'm not sure where I'm going to be able to fish for, for, for the other side of the debate, but let's see. Yes, it is. Yes, I think there's at least one. I've seen the reports. Obviously, I don't know the full circumstance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no way that you can't say these are very serious matters and that in certain circumstances, people, particularly those with previous convictions, get automatically uh, media custodial sentences. It must be that in a situation of um, Mr. Edwards' position, uh, I'm not suggesting it's because he was a, a, a personality, but because of the medical circumstances, the lack of remorse, and it is important that if at some point he stopped, there have to, has to be real remorse and it has to be uh, uh, you know, real medical issues. Um, it would be, even if it wasn't Hugh Edwards, something that I think most courts would consider whether or not, in the circumstances, it could be a suspended sentence after imposing it. He's also going to be on a sex offending register and he has to go through rehabilitation. He was considered not to be dangerous. That's another factor. So I, I, I'm assuming in the two hours situation that was, you would have been in court, a lot of information was put before the judge and an appropriate decision was made after careful thought. But I understand people, would, this is a very serious matter. It's, um, you know, nobody can, nobody, there's no way of not looking at that way. But I don't think it's an unusual sense in the circumstances. Grateful for your time. Thanks for coming on. Stuart Nolan, Chair of the Criminal Law Committee at the Law Society, Managing Director of DPP Law. I'll come back to that point about Hugh Edwards, uh, the suggestion being that he would be vulnerable in prison. Why, why, is, why is that man's vulnerability in prison seemingly put ahead of the vulnerability of the children he viewed being sexually abused, or indeed the vulnerability of any children that his criminality, he, he, the criminality he may commit in the future might make vulnerable? Why, why, is, why is their vulnerability apparently secondary in this? And that's where you get so many people so angry at, like, um, that, that the offender is always uh, protected. Uh, and, and now we can start seeing why people get so angry at that. Something that I want to um, talk about and for us to actually learn together is this Category A business. So um, as far as I know, uh, when police are find, discover uh, images of children, videos of children, what they do is they categorise them, A, B, C, D, I believe, um, and they are categorised due to their severity. And so on Hugh Edwards' phone, on his WhatsApp that he received, um, he received uh, a few images of category A. Now, let's get a definition for category A so that we actually understand what that means. One second. Okay, so category A, images involving penetrative sexual activity, sexual activity with an animal or sadism. Sorry, I don't know how to say that word. Category B, images involving non-penetrative sexual activity. Category C, other indecent images not falling into categories A or B, must it, but it must not depict any sexual activity. Okay, so what we're saying is category C does not depict any sexual activity. So that could just be an image of a child playing, for example. Category B could be um, 
some sexual activity but no penetration so that could be let's say oral sex with a child and how horrible is it that when I'm even explaining this but listen it's known that millions of images and videos are traded online every day. Uh, people have done research into that and they are they are true statistics. So let's not think that this isn't happening. Now, category A, which Hugh Edwards had on his mobile phone, um, involves penetrative sexual activity. Now, whilst I was watching some YouTube videos, um, it's known, uh, it's, it's, it's public information that he had some content involving a seven-year-old, which was category A. Now we start getting into the realness of this crime. Let's just say that again. He had content on his mobile phone, which was of a seven-year-old, and the content was categorised as category A, involving penetration. Now, do you think that when he received those, he was just uh, looked at them once or twice? Or do you think he masturbated over them? I think he probably masturbated over them. Why else would you have them? He had a sexual gratification around this child being penetrated, a seven-year-old. What the hell? That turns your stomach, right? And now, how do we feel about the judge saying that he's not a risk to the public? Now, what do we say about the fact that he can be rehabilitated, as if you can just take this thing out of his head and he can return back to some kind of normal sexual activity? It's it's actually madness. It's actually madness. When you, when you think about those types of imagery, that is what infuriated me when I first heard about this case. When I started seeing that what we do is we label these as indecent images. Indecent images of children. And I think that's an embarrassing title. I think that is that terminology. We should we should feel ashamed that we use that terminology. Do you know that? Because if you think about a seven year old being penetrated and other category A images and videos that are being recorded right now, we're going to call them indecent. Let me find out the definition of decent. Uh, give me just one second. Okay. <laughs> Here's the definition of indecent. Not conforming with generally accepted standards of behaviour, especially in relation to sexual matters. It's much more than that. It's much more severe than just calling it indecent images. I think that's a... My goodness, you think uh, you know, that, that that child that that is in that piece of content, if they're an adult or not yet, if they heard that that's the way we label what happened to them, they would be absolutely distraught no doubt about it let's continue marilyn hawes is founder and chief executive of the charity freedom from abuse thank you for coming on the program marilyn your view of the arguments that saw hugh edwards walk out of court today oh i was outraged i mean truly outraged because normally i hear what that gentleman's just said but normally I mean, there was a barrister on earlier who actually said as i also know after 20 years of doing this normally cases like this should and would go to the crown court yeah it didn't yeah, yeah. it is incredibly serious yes if anybody wants to know what he was looking at do look up category a on the copine scale okay. it's drive time i'm not going to say exactly Thank what it was much, but these are children i if one more person just, just very quickly it's so funny isn't it the way we behave as people because um she just said category a go go look it up i'm not going to tell you what it is because it's it's prime time tv and the presenter says thank you and i'm like <laughs> do you know what I mean? it's like why why wouldn't we say it what it is like, this is involving children like like why do we do that like oh it's it's data and i'm not um criticizing marilyn here at all like it's the way we all talk about it yeah but it's like oh this is daytime tv it could be too much for people what about the children that got recorded during the acts <laughs> was it too much for them did we did we have to put a trick give them a trigger warning <laughs> like come on again no criticism it's just the way we behave it's so unusual says to me in decent images i'm going to implode he's arrogant oh i'm sure he denied it Do you know i go into prisons i talk to pedophiles i talk to sex offenders i've never known one admit it they all think they're entitled to doing it i'm not seeing remorse he's only sorry because he's got caught isn't he and yeah. oh dear he's not going to get a job well he's got a three hundred thousand pound a year 
income of pension from the BBC. So there's a lot of questions here about the BBC as well. And a sentence like this, which isn't a sentence, um, what message is it giving to others mm. who are out there doing exactly the same and worse? And of course, the prisons are full. So he wasn't going to go to prison anymore, was he? Because that's all in a mess as well. But what is, it must be paedophiles out there now rubbing their hands with glee saying, <laughs> look at that. I can do this as well now. <laughs> Good points. Good points by Marilyn, and you can feel her passion and emotion um, towards this topic. I know, I do know of Marilyn. We've had some conversations in the time that I've been doing this work. She actually doesn't like me. Um, she put out some tweets when it was used to be Twitter, uh, telling schools to be wary of me because I've never done safeguarding training and I have a conviction on my DBS check for knocking on my abuser's door. And she wrote it in a tweet. Like, I was so angry at her uh, for that. Why not just message me and say, I think you should do safeguarding training if you're going to go into schools? Because at that time, I didn't want to do it because I felt like I had my opinions about it. But I did it. So, you know, we're all good and yes I have a conviction on my DBS check for knocking on the man's door and uh they've oh, yeah we, we all know about that story anyway I don't want to go off to too much of a tangent but thank you Marilyn for this I can hear you speaking so passionately about it you make great points about how ridiculous this all is and with the sentencing I heard that eight out of ten people that get convicted for having imagery content of children being sexually abused on a device do not to see prison eight out of ten so only two out of ten actually see a prison sentence now marilyn very brilliantly um mentioned about the prisons already being full now this is where i think there's an opportunity for me to try to um bring to the table the counter counter argument to just locking everybody up and again I have released podcasts on this in, in the past trying to really um, understand it full circle and um, what I remember seeing in one of the videos that I was reviewing was a lawyer saying that the prisons are already full we're already at maximum capacity so we can't just there's there's no room to to put people if we're just going to be putting people in prison for every offence. So that's just not possible. It's just not possible. So what next? Well, I thought it was quite a um, interesting perspective when somebody said, if you are in possession of A-class drugs, I believe um, in some circumstances you will see prison. If you are a distributor of A-class drugs, you will see prison. Can we not consider the content of a child being raped, content of a child being molested, content for a child being sexually assaulted in that severity? Can we not do that? And just to try to hit this home even more, just think about this being your child, right? Or a child in your family, a niece, a nephew, a younger sister, a younger brother. Um, let's really think about it in its real terms. Um, so, okay, so the problem is if we increase the severity of this, then, then there's still no space in the prisons. So what do we do about this? One thing that they have done is they've put Hugh Edwards on a, on the sex offenders register but they've done it for seven years that's so weird to me what why seven years surely it should just be life uh, he should just be monitored um for life if we are really uh, serious about the protection of of children um why seven years the sex offenders register is not so much in my view a punishment it's it's a way that we can monitor what you're doing online, what job you have, what access you have to other children, etc. And I know the police are under-resourced because nobody's funding this, but look, 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 listen to this, listen to this. Why is it under-resourced? Why is it not taken seriously? Why are other crimes considered so much more severe than this particular one that we're talking about? And how do we change that? Now, this is not new thoughts in my head. I've been thinking about this for years upon years upon years. And I'm going to show you the proof, actually, that I've been thinking about this deeply for many years. Because I always thought in my head, I wonder 
how society and the world in general would be if they actually saw some of these category B, category A images and videos. Now, those that are watching along on YouTube or listening on your podcast app, the first thing you may think is, well, I don't want to see that. I don't wa- Why would I want to see that? Okay, understood. Nobody wants to see that. But if the videos and images on his mobile phone were shown in court, which I'm going to guess they were not, would the sentencing have been different? That category A content involving that seven-year-old being penetrated, if we were to show that, if we were to actually show it to the general public, not just the court, court inside the court, if we were to show it to the general public, there would be huge outrage. Now, in me thinking about these things and continuously in my head thinking about them, I did make some content around this. Now, I'm going to show you an animation uh, that I made with a, with a great animator. This would have been about four years ago. And um, just for some context, um, when I first started this and I left my engineering career, um, I had this big bank of money that I collected because I've been being paid well throughout my engineering career. I had lots. I had lots. I had a big sum of money in there. Um, and I started using it on collaborations with the short films that you may know from my YouTube channel um, and at different animations and different illustration projects. Now, all of that money's gone. I spent it all. And my goodness, it was enough to really set me up for, for um, a very comfortable lifestyle. But I spent it all on the creative projects. And I have no regrets about that because those creative projects were great journeys for me to go on. And and these these kind of um these pieces of content still stand strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play you the, the one about illegal content online, um, which was my thoughts. Uh just hold on, let me just find that. Now If you are listening to this in audio format, don't worry, you're still going to be able to understand this without seeing the visual. But if you are on YouTube or you have a moment and you're listening in audio, please just go to my YouTube channel and um, watch this part of the video because uh, the animation is pretty cool, I think. Uh, But let's have a think about my thoughts. Again, I wrote this and made this four years ago, so it's not going to be up-to-date, accurate representation of what I think now, but let me just show it and then we can talk about it afterwards. If we were to show a real video of a child being sexually abused, we could pick from one of the many millions that are available online. I wonder what the response would be. Do you think actually seeing it happen for real would cause such public outrage that the government would be able to do nothing but act and finally clean up the internet of this material? Do you think it could even get a global response where every government from every country stepped in to stop the spread of the problem? Or do you think it would just be way too uncomfortable that we'd continue to pretend like the millions of child abuse videos that are available online are not a massive problem? Okay. Come on, I feel so proud of that, you know. I actually feel so proud of that work. Like I was thinking deeply about these topics like years and years ago. And and I wonder what you think about that. Um, I I know that I've actually had quite an anger response um, from people about my suggestion there. um, Because a lot of people are like, well, you can't do that. It's someone else's video. And I'm like, yeah, of course, we wouldn't show someone's video uh, without their consent. Now, let's say that seven-year-old girl that was being penetrated and he was getting off on it. Let's say she's 25 or he's 25 now. And they're like, yeah, show it show it but you wouldn't be able to show it like they couldn't even mention the category a thing on tv how are we going to show it anyway let's continue with this video i mean it's just just absolutely shocking that i i deal with the children i deal with children who have been sexually abused i mean the man is a grubby little toad frankly Everyone that goes to a prison, yes, they get badly treated by other prisoners. Sorry, the one thing they don't like, prisoners, is people who abuse children and who enjoy looking at it. It's outrageous. Marilyn, I'm going to pause you there just for a second and pick up on what the chief magistrate said, which was the chief magistrate was persuaded that Hugh Edwards didn't really know and had no memory of looking at those most serious images because of his mental health condition. I mean, come on, he's just clutching at straws here, yeah? That is absolutely ridiculous. Nobody looks at those types of images and videos and that content and all of a sudden forgets about it. I mean, I don't buy that at all. 
Well, he looked pretty okay to me when he walked in the court. He looked incredibly arrogant. And like, like they all do. I'm sorry, I don't buy into that. This is the same barrister that said he had exceptional characters. Exceptional character, for goodness sake. Does he know what it means? That's what he said at the time. So, yeah, I mean, all right, his barrister's done a good job for him, hasn't he? And he's obviously been paid a fortune to do it. I, I'm i sorry. He ha- Just quickly, that's really interesting, isn't, isn't it? You get good barristers and they can get you off anything. If you've got money and you get a good enough barrister, they can pretty much get you off anything. And that's probably one of the flaws to the system. I don't know how you would address that but he's obviously had a very good barrister that's no memory oh yeah that's that's a, that's a smart that's a smart one that isn't it maybe, maybe he hasn't in which case maybe he shouldn't have been in court at all i don't i don't believe him i've heard too many people like him mm. tell me they've even accused a child of you know sort of coercing a grown man into doing this to them you, you can't believe the garbage that comes out of these people's mouths i've heard it so often i don't believe him i just think he got caught has he has he said i'm so sorry to the children that were on those videos it's out there now all over the internet those children are still being viewed and watched for grubby little men like him i'm sorry i am I'm, I'm i'm outraged by it because you know honestly tom in this country the government and all governments the 20 years i've done this job no one gives a monkeys about the harm to children in this country otherwise a lot of this would have been stopped there's well, no I, one from government that's speaking out today is there i think well said marilyn well said that is very very good if we actually had the safety of children as priority this would would have been stopped a long time ago a big stop would have been put to this something that's very interesting to think about is um hugh edwards did not generate this content he did not record these children himself he was actually sent these images um by to my knowledge a a young man and there was an exchange of money there too i believe um so i heard that actually the young man that sent these images to Hugh Edwards. I think there's 42 pieces of content in total. He didn't get prison sentence either. He got suspended sentence. Um, So actually what I think is useful for us to think about is, okay, so Hugh Edwards is kind of the person along the timeline that got caught, right? But if we think about going further back in the timeline, somebody sent those to Hugh Edwards. That man has been arrested and he didn't get... um, Uh, prison time either he got a suspended sentence so if we compare that drug analogy again uh, the person before Hugh Edwards distributed the content and then who who made it so uh, uh, nobody I I probably watched six or six or seven videos of different news outlets reporting on this I didn't hear anybody talk about the person who generated the content and also I didn't um find anybody talking about actual that the children that were in the video like are we going to go looking for them do we go looking for them um were they identifiable uh, i don't know anything that happens um with that i mean how brilliant it would be if i could get police officers and investigators um onto this podcast to talk about that and just to quickly finish this particular comment that i'm making shout out to all the police investigators police officers that work on the child abuse investigation teams that have to watch this content day in day out to try to get a prosecution against someone because yeah they may not show it in the court yeah they may not not show it in public but damn right those police officers are going to work every day and having to view this content trying to identify the child seeing if there's any faces that are identifiable so they can get a prosecution hats off to you you are true heroes i i i want to support you i think the um we have talked about it before, you and I, Marilyn, but I've talked about it. I talked about it on the show lots of times. The apparent, I think some of the, the, the apparent softness that there seems to be towards men who view terrible images of children. I mean, Q Edwards is not the only person to have escaped a prison sentence having viewed some of the most sickening and disgusting images of children. Grateful to you for coming on. Marilyn Hawes, founder and chief executive of the charity Freedom From Abuse. Can I read you this, please? Thank you, Marilyn. It is from the psychological report that was done into Hugh Edwards uh, that built into the judge's findings about um, mitigation. Just want to read you this. The, 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 so this is paragraph 16. The report's primary relevant findings are, and I'll quote this, 
Mr Edwards is a complex individual with a psychologically challenging upbringing in which his relationship with his father was particularly challenging and probably damaging psychologically. The restrictive, puritanical but often hypocritical background of growing up in the particular cultural milieu of South Wales with a father who was highly regarded and lauded outside the family but was perceived as behaving monstrously within the family created both an enduring cognitive dissonance and low self-esteem compounded by a sense of being inferior by not getting into Oxford and going to Cardiff instead and being therefore something of an outsider at the BBC. None of this excuses the action. None of that, in my eyes, excuses having content on your phone of a child being sexually abused. Like, just none of it. Like, none of it affects my thoughts towards a criminal. Like, the history. I understand that some people um, have been through horrific childhoods. And uh, how, how to say this? That... It could have been a contributor that led them to commit such a crime against another child, right? Psychologically, I can get my head around that. I understand that, and I understand that there are links to that. And um, we, 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 we see that there is research that will show us that scientifically. Okay, but I, I still don't think that excuses the crime. I don't think it should excuse the crime um, because the child is the priority. Again, I just keep saying the same thing because I truly believe it. I consider that all of this, including and as well as the persistent depressive disorder with intermittent bouts of clinical depression, though none as severe as the current one, significantly and adversely affected Mr Edwards' decision making decision making in relation to looking after himself and, crucially in this context, his interaction with co-workers and strangers via social media. His reported conduct reflects this. So he didn't get into Oxford. So he's considered an outsider. And that compounds his self of sense his sense of self-esteem. Being one of the highest paid, most highly regarded and influential voices on the BBC for decades. Hmm. Okay, that's the end of the video. I thought there was enough there for us to have a good discussion. Again, I didn't mean for this to last nearly an hour I apologize about that but it's almost a shame that it's taken a celebrity to get caught for this to come up in the mainstream media because we could say that there are these convictions or, or lack of convictions are happening all the time um, but let's take it let's take it as a as, as, as a our advantage yes it's been brought to the mainstream media for this reason and we're okay with that and now let's look at it I want some of my work to start going down this direction of looking at the laws and the way we treat this crime and starting to um, sh bring to light the inconsistencies um, the, the the lack of uh, common sense um, the way that it's not handled with the severity that we all agree as a community that it should be handled and um, as I continue building this thing um, as you know one of my goals is to have a team of people helping me um, doing the research bringing these topics so that we can release more videos release more podcasts and learn as we go and start to make a stand like literally start to say enough is enough we want change and it is uh, the cliche power is with the people and if we can get enough movement behind this then um i always say like before our time is up um on this on this on this earth we can we can make some great changes for today's generation and inspire the next generation coming up to continue with that change now that's a great place to stop thank you so much for joining me on this podcast i hope you found it insightful thought provoking informative because i certainly did and i'll see you for another episode soon thank you